No code is one of the fastest moving segments of the software development ecosystem right now. And if you haven't heard of no code, it is essentially the transition from doing everything with custom programming languages like JavaScript, etc., and transitioning to something called visual programming. Some of the most common options are things like Bubble.io, Flutterflow, Webflow, Zapier, etc. And this transitioning is changing the way that app development is done. In this video, I'm gonna dive into all the ways I think things are gonna change the next few years and try to answer the question of, will no code replace developers? Let's jump into it. So if you're actually considering jumping into building an app and you're trying to figure out if no code will replace developers, really what the most important thing to think about is understanding the current landscape of software development. Right now, you have traditional development, which is on one side of the development spectrum, and this would be primarily developing software in traditional languages like Python, C++, and other languages that are more traditionally known for building enterprise-level software applications. Then on the other side, you have the software called NoCode, which is essentially tools like uh, Webflow, tools like Zapier, etc. And these are really easy for people to use. In fact, they don't even really feel like they're developing anything at all. There's not really a normal programming interface, I would say, when you're using these softwares, because they're really meant to be very easy for people to use, but they replace a lot of the core attributes of software development. And the middle case, which is what I'm most interested in personally, is called visual programming. That's right in the middle. And what visual programming is, is it's more like bubble.io and bubble.io is this really cool software which i've made a lot of videos about now at this point which gives you a lot of the same capabilities of a traditional software developer but instead you're using drag and drop elements you can do a lot of the same things with a lot less time and a lot less effort which is why i prefer it for building applications now, the cool thing is that it is very powerful when you are building with the visual programming language. So for example, a developer, a traditional, let's say front-end developer, might take a while to put together components for the front-end of an application. And actually using those components in building the front-end of an app using traditional languages. A lot of that is sometimes boilerplate code that they have to kind of stitch together to make sure that everything works and they have to make sure that the front end is always working with the back end. Now the cool thing about a tool like Bubble.io is that you actually don't need to make that happen because they're always working together and it will also tell you every single time there is an error. Now, traditional code can tell you this to an extent, especially when you're using code editors. It will tell you where there's errors, where there's syntax errors and things of this nature. But the cool thing about Bubble is it actually will prevent you from deploying your application until you fix the errors. It will show you if there's anything that is not correct with the way you've set it up, which prevents a lot of the debugging that traditionally goes into normal software development. It cuts down on your time substantially. Now, I personally believe that visual programming will actually do a lot more for helping expedite app development than traditional software development uh, programmers are giving it credit for. I actually think that visual programming languages like Bubble.io will make things a lot quicker, a lot faster, and help get apps out, especially MVPs, without the insane level of cost that's gone into building them in the past. So, for example, you might have had to pay $10,000 a month for let's say four, five, six months to get an MVP built just even a year ago. And now to get an MVP built, you don't need to spend that kind of money. You could spend way less to get that MVP built and actually get it done a lot faster. One of the coolest things too is that you can actually have users interacting with some of the core features even in week one or month one. And the final thing that really, really gets me excited about specifically visual programming languages like Bubble.io is that you actually have control. You're in the driver's seat and you could actually work with your developers. You don't have to be beholden to them only. You actually can get in there and start developing things with them right away. So you could teach yourself some of the stuff pretty quickly and start working with them, which is a much more collaborative process. It's actually why I started getting involved into it because it was just such an easy process and so much better uh, to do it that way. Also, when I've talked to a lot of developers about this and I've mentioned that, hey, this is something that'll actually save you a lot of time, they really do enjoy it because what it does is it basically saves them from the monotony of having to work with all this boilerplate code. You know, this code that just 
you know, takes a lot of time, isn't really fun, isn't really engaging, but you just have to put it in there because if you don't have it in there, the app's just not gonna look that good, it's not gonna perform that well, right? So sometimes you do need to find ways to expect the process. The other thing I wanted to show you was actually how fast it's grown in the last few years. So this is the Bubble homepage. When you look here, it says there's 3.3 million bubblers today. When I started learning this about uh, two years ago, there was barely a million. So the growth rate is crazy. And so I think getting into this now is really powerful. Also, if you haven't heard of this already, they just released the uh, new security standard. So now they have SOC 2 compliance, GDR compliance, and this is maybe even gonna become HIPAA compliant in the future, which I think is really cool. And so being able to do this with applications now opens up a whole uh, new realm of software development. I mean, this just wasn't there before. And so having the ability to do this and build these enterprise applications is really neat. Now I actually believe that visual programming will comprise about 90% of all software development in the future. And again, I'm saying visual programming because I don't think that the next batch in let's say, you know, five years of VC funded startups are gonna be building on only Webflow or Zapier or these really simple uh, no code platforms. I'm suggesting that tools like Bubble.io, which has spent over a decade building a visual programming interface, will actually become so good and so powerful that most MVPs are built in, uh, in visual programming languages like Bubble.io. And I do want to say just, you know, unequivocally that the reason I think it's such a high number is because so many apps actually don't hit scale. They're usually just very specific pinpoint solutions that work for a business, which is why I think a lot of companies will opt for this. But I think a lot of developers, their jobs will still be secure because especially when you're trying to build apps for companies like Facebook or Google, I don't think they're going to be using uh, visual programming languages anytime soon. I think they're still going to stick to their traditional environments. So I don't think they have anything to fear in that regard. And I will say too, if you're thinking about doing this for your software, you might want to start off with visual programming, but you always want to have a backup plan with something more custom. So what I typically recommend you do is you have a backup database where you copy all your data over to it. So that way it actually is being saved somewhere else and it's not just in one location. So that way you can actually move over to a custom more scalable platform in the future. There will always be this problem, at least in the next five years, I believe, where if you actually hit scale, the visual programming apps like Bubble will hit constraints. But if it keeps advancing faster and faster, it keeps growing at this rate, by the time you actually hit scale, it may not be a problem. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped answer some of the questions around will no code replace developers, I like to look at it as no code will enhance development and specifically visual programming will probably replace a lot of the uh, traditional boilerplate development that really nobody likes doing anyways and will probably expedite a lot of things for a lot of developers. So I hope you like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, uh, peace.